This is a brief summary of every single member of the Ultimates, and for those of you who may be unaware, this is essentially the new Marvel Ultimate Universe's version of the Avengers. All this begins with the Maker, who is an evil version of Reed Richards from the original Ultimates universe. He travels to this new universe, which was Earth-6160, an Earth that was supposed to turn out like Earth-616, and used a time machine to completely derail the Age of Heroes and set himself up as Imperator. Now, the heart and soul of this team is Tony Stark, aka Iron Lad. He is the son of Howard Stark, and this world's Iron Iron Man. Howard actually sacrificed himself in order to trap the Maker for 18 months, which leads to Tony donning the armor for himself, becoming Iron Lad, and teaming up with this universe's Doctor Doom to bring about the Age of Heroes. Well, that brings us to Reed Richards, aka Doom. Maker had delayed the Fantastic Four's flight by a few minutes, which ends absolutely catastrophically. While Reed was the only survivor of this accident, the Maker doesn't stop there. He takes Reed as his own personal slave and permanently bonds a Doom mask to his face. Reed was actually working closely with Howard when he decided to turn on the Maker and imprison him. That is why he sets off with Iron Lad in order to build a new Age of Heroes. That brings us to this universe of Steve Rogers. Now, everything you know about him as far as like being a World War II super soldier, all the same. But the Maker was never able to locate Steve Rogers frozen in the ice. Turns out that was because Reed and Doom had actually plucked him out of the time stream and pulled him into the present in order for him to unthaw in Stark Tower. Waking up from one war against the fascists to find out that he's been thawed out into another uh, didn't exactly, like, go well with Steve at first. But he quickly gets over it and becomes a much-needed member of the team. And because he was never thawed out in, like, the Maker's version of this world, he's still, like, the bright, hopeful, optimistic guy from the main universe that you know and love. That brings me to Steve's World War II buddy, Jim Hammond, who is the original and this world's only Human Torch. We've not seen much of Jim so far. All we really know is Steve, Tony, and Doom had broke into one of the Maker's damage control facilities in order to reignite him. Oh, and uh, there is that too, which is pretty badass. After that, I'm going to move on to Thor and kind of by extension, Sif. Unlike his main universe counterpart, Thor is not the king of Asgard. In fact, the Maker actually went out of his way to facilitate Loki taking the throne of Asgard, which leads to the destruction of the Bifrost, and Thor to live a life in prison. Once Thor is broken out by Tony and Doom, we see him going to recover Mjolnir, where he comes face to face with Sif, who turns out is actually his warden. While she doesn't exactly buy into everything that Reed and Tony are saying, Sif just kind of goes along for the ride because Thor is still her prisoner and her responsibility. That brings us to our next package deal, Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, aka the Wasp and Giant Man. It turns out the Maker had completely derailed these two from ever becoming superhuman by giving Hank permanent brain damage and stealing his early version of a Pym generator. Janet was more than willing and even excited to take on her role as a superhero once offered by the Ultimate. Hank, it turns out, had been much more reluctant. See, Tony had actually offered him to become a superhero six months prior, and he'd been hiding it from Janet the entire time. However, after a quite rousing speech from Captain America, Hank also steps up and fulfills his role as a world superhero. We also have America Chavez, who is in this world a temporal refugee from the future, and she was being kept prisoner and drained of her cosmic radiation underneath the White House by an evil capitalist known as Midas broken out and rescued by the Ultimates on the 4th of July. After that, we have Charlie Ramsey, a two-spirited Native American, also known as Hawkeye. The Iron Lad had crafted a really intricate suit and a whole array of Stark Tech arrows to give to Clint Barton, who then took it and promptly threw it in the trash. The bow and arrow and suit was then promptly picked up by Charlie, who immediately used them to fight back against the evil industrialists who had been ruining their land. Last but certainly not least, we have LaJori Zakaria. I hope to God I'm not butchering that name, a.k.a. She-Hulk. She was just a small child who lived on the Pacific Islands. Bruce Banner and his team happened to be testing out their gamma bombs. Because of the gamma radiation, her home quickly became one of monsters, helpless, defenseless mutates. But luckily enough for all of them, they had LaJori, who was their ever-vigilant defender. And after convincing Tony Stark to fix the damage that Bruce Banner had done, she agreed to join the Ultimates. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and I made it as non-confusing as possible.